you, you could find my walking step for me, please. Not far from one of the southernmost cities on Earth, Lloyd Esler is scouring for a strange sort of treasure. Whale shit. Yes, shit from a whale. Really? Known more formally as ambergris. And it's worth a small fortune. I'll just show you these bits here. So oh, this, yeah, is, wow. this is what we're... That's what we're looking for. This is stuff you found around here? It's, I found it mostly on Arishi Beach here. Ambergris is formed when a sperm whale eats squid. Tiny squid beaks are harder than most metals and can't be digested. Usually, whales vomit them out, but about 1% of the time, beaks make their way into the digestive tract and are coated in a wax-like substance to protect the stomach from getting cut up. The whale poops that out. It's carried away by ocean currents and bakes in the sun until, eventually, it washes up on a beach, looking a whole lot like dog shit. Unless you're one of those people who know what to look for and what to smell for. And is that a piece of squid beak there? Yeah. Tiny beaks, aren't they? Yeah. You find much amber very often? Oh, um... Maybe once or twice a year, really. Yeah. There's there's more people looking for it now, so it's a bit harder to um, a bit harder to get than it used to be. So the biggest lump found in Southland was about 80 kilograms back in about 1929, and three guys found it. Each bought a farm with the proceeds. Ambergris isn't a new fad. Moby Dick had a whole chapter on it. Marie Antoinette had it in her perfume, and Montezuma smoked it. Now, it's used mostly by luxury perfume makers, since it can make smells last longer on human skin. Its scarcity drives the price up even more. How valuable are we talking here per gram? At least $10, maybe $20 a gram, maybe. So if, if it's worth $10 a gram, then a kilogram's worth $10,000, so. Um, and how much have you collected over the years, do you think, in terms of grams? Um, biggest bit was, probably the size of a tennis ball. And I'm not here to make money out of it, but, mm. but, but also keen to stop the fraud that um, seems to be happening with people selling what they're claiming is ambergris, but pretty obviously isn't. Since sperm whales are a protected species, buying or selling ambergris is illegal in the US and Australia. But in New Zealand, it's fair game. And like with anything valuable, there are plenty of scammers. Esla's been using TradeMe, New Zealand's eBay, to try and flush them out. My piece at 7.2 grams, is, this is it here. So that's 154 grams being sold for $1,000. $1,000. And why would somebody sell it here for $7 a gram if they could get twice that much from an ambergris buyer? Mm. Uh, that means that they, the ambergris buyer has turned it down because it's not real. Um, they're trying to get what they can from it from people who do not know what it is. We just touched down in Stewart Island, Rakiura. It's a remote island off the southern tip of New Zealand. It's only about 400 people live here, but one person has said that it's a treasure trove for ambergris. Do you ever see sperm whales around here? Usually further out though. I saw a humpback here there a couple of years ago. First one I'd ever seen. What are the kind of climate conditions that bring stuff in from other parts of the world into these kind of bays around here? Well, mainly when it's from the west, anything out there just gets washed up on the beaches. So some of that ambergris could have come quite away then? Yeah. Well, it floats, so it, it can, you know, can drift around. In this tiny community, Philip Smith says everybody knows about ambergris, but they mostly keep it a secret. Almost no one is ever willing to talk about where it was found or how much they got for it. So why are people so tight-lipped about ambergris? Well, it's because if they're open about it, you know, they'll probably end up with the 20 or 30 people walking along the beach in front of them looking. <laughs> Through the grapevine, you occasionally hear you know, that somebody had found a, an exceptionally large piece. What's the most you've ever heard of someone around here making of a find of ambergris? I heard that, that, that one piece, it was about 300,000. 
If I put myself in that position and found a big piece, I wouldn't tell anybody. The purchaser, he'll, he'll pay the price, but I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> Ambergris can get so serious that one hunter agreed to meet with us, only to pull out at the last minute because they feared retribution from other hunters. Ambergris, it's a very sensitive subject, you know, and next thing you know, I'm getting people knocking on the door like, what the f did you do that, you stupid? The secrecy around who found Ambergris and where extends all the way to Otago Museum which has a collection of the stuff locked away for safekeeping. For those who haven't smelled ambergris, how would you describe the odour of this stuff? I'd describe it as, it's quite heavily musky. It's got a real scent of the ocean. Some of the more fresh stuff that's just come out of a whale will have a kind of distinctive poo odour to it as well. Not a defining test, but yeah, I'd be looking for that real strong musk. It's mm. like an animal kind of mm. smell, right? Yeah, quite. That kind of like warm hamster cage smell. <laughs> I've never had a hamster, but yeah. Uh, that's yeah, it, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. The majority of that smell is probably from the amberin. As that breaks down and oxidizes, it forms amber oxide which is the substance that they're wanting for the perfume. See, there's people roaming the beaches just kicking a lot of dog shit, just mm. hoping for the best. There is a saying that I've heard from people that collect ambergris, and it's that, yeah, you've got you to kick a lot of shit before you find your gold. Professional hunters take ambergris to a network of dealers and brokers, but amateurs often bring their finds to the museum, and they're usually disappointed. A few people do get pretty upset when they think that what they thought was going to be a big fortune was not, obviously. You know, if you thought that you're going to, you know, buy a new car and you can't. Do you have to break many hearts? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, given that I've never had an actual piece of ambergris come into the museum, it's, it's mostly been heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 